All right, good evening, everyone. Dr. Randall Gates, board certified chiropractic neurologist, also a chiropractic physician at Gates Brain Health. All right, good evening, good evening everyone. everyone. Let me, and so I'm going to keep going. So, anyways, tonight I'm talking about antiphospholipid syndrome and mixed connective tissue disease. Let's see how this goes with the stream. So, let me go here and we're going to present. From the beginning. Okay, so again, Dr. Randall Gates, board certified chiropractic neurologist, also a chiropractic physician at Gates Brain Health tonight, talking about antiphospholipid syndrome and mixed connective tissue disease. So tonight's article that I'm going to go over is from the Journal of Autoimmunity, examining this connection. What is antiphospholipid syndrome? It is a condition typically seen when a younger female has a miscarriage or has multiple miscarriages, most typically, doctors start checking those patients for antiphospholipid syndrome. Antiphospholipid syndrome has a tendency to produce blood clotting issues, particularly for the placenta. Also, individuals who have strokes or other blood clotting issues who may not have the typical risk factors will be screened for antiphospholipid syndrome. If a person is found to have that, they may have what's referred to, I believe, as primary antiphospholipid syndrome, which is basically this condition by itself. And then there's also the secondary form, which is when it's associated with another autoimmune disease, like lupus. Lupus is the most common uh, other condition that it's associated with. Now, in this article, they look at not only lupus, but other systemic autoimmune diseases, particularly as it pertains to tonight, mixed connective tissue disease. And what is mixed connective tissue disease versus you know, lupus? And you can go back and watch my mixed connective tissue disease broadcast, but basically in rheumatology, they call them the overlap syndrome. So we have undifferentiated connective tissue disease. We have mixed connective tissue disease, and then we have lupus. And in essence, for those who have a positive antinuclear antibody, if you've heard of that, that's very positive, it's a very high number, and then a person's found to have what's called a positive RNP antibody, and they have severe muscle aches and joint pains and signs of synovial inflammation around their joints, then they're deemed to have mixed connective tissue disease. Those patients are a little different in terms of their blood testing from lupus patients because lupus patients tend to have a rash or they have signs of pulmonary disease or kidney disease in the form of glomerular nephritis. They may also have antibodies that are called anti uh, Smith antibodies, anti Rho antibodies possibly, or double-stranded DNA antibodies as well. So the antibody profiles are a little different and the clinical manifestations are a little different between mixed connective tissue disease and lupus, but there are overlaps, which is why they're called the overlap syndromes. Undifferentiated connective tissue disease is even a little less severe than mixed connective tissue. But nonetheless, mixed connective tissue disease by itself is rather severe. And when I did the broadcast on it, I had a lot of comments regarding the condition because many of the patients with mixed connective tissue disease I think feel a little unheard. They feel um, kind of pushed away by their doctors without uh, definitive treatments all the time and it's a difficult condition to manage. So I talked about the gut connections to mixed connective tissue disease in that broadcast. But again, you can go and watch it. Tonight's question was connecting antiphospholipid syndrome and antiphospholipid antibodies with mixed connective tissue disease. So this fantastic journal uh, out of the Journal of Autoimmunity published in 2020 is great. So here's an article if you want to look it up. Now, uh, this is from Arab Labs. Arab Labs are out of Salt Lake City. Um, and one of the key hospitals here in Nevada uses Arab Lab. So I just put this up here so you can see what the antibodies are for detecting antiphospholipid syndrome. They're referred to as cardiolipin antibodies. There are three different types of them, an IgA, IgM, and IgG. Uh, they tend to be, they need to be present for more than 12 weeks to diagnose someone with antiphospholipid syndrome. And um, usually they're going to be pretty positive. You know, above 81, as you can see here, for this lab. But reference range is very from lab to lab to lab. And then we have the other components of the 
the workup for blood clots, so to speak, in a patient suspected of having antiphospholipid syndrome, which include the beta-2 glycoprotein antibodies, the lupus anticoagulant, and also what's referred to, I believe, as the diffuse Russell Viper Venom time confirmation. So that's kind of what the testing looks like when we're suspecting antiphospholipid syndrome. Now, here they start out by saying the two forms of antiphospholipid syndrome exist, primary, which I discussed, which is by itself, and secondary, which I discussed, is associated with another systemic autoimmune disease. And the prevalence of antiphospholipid syndrome is actually pretty high, like 1% to 5% in the general population, so that's significant. So if you've known a female who's had miscarriages and they don't have an explanation, you may want to say, hey, have you been checked for antiphospholipid syndrome? I will say I have found this diagnosis in a number of patients when, you know, maybe others weren't suspecting it. So it's important to look at it. Um, and then here in the abstract, which I think encompasses the study really well, they looked at about 1,800 patients. So 1,818 patients were reviewed with systemic autoimmune diseases, 453 with lupus, 385 with systemic sclerosis, 359 with rheumatoid arthritis, 367 with Sjogren's, that's where the immune system attacks the eyes, 94 with mixed connective tissue, and 160 with undifferentiated connective tissue disease. And they found that antiphospholipid syndrome was present in like 57.6% of lupus patients. So that's a very large overlap. So that is important. And then in the non-lupus group, non-SLE, as you can see here, 13.7% of the systemic autoimmune diseases patients had antiphospholipid syndrome. So that's important. And if you have mixed connect if you have mixed connective tissue disease and you have a history of blood clots in your leg or strokes that no one could explain or transient ischemic attacks or miscarriages, you really want to be checked for antiphospholipid syndrome. And so they basically said there are many variables. They looked at the different antibodies that I mentioned, and they basically could predict in the lupus group versus the non-lupus group which antibody would correlate with, you know, thrombotic events versus miscarriages, so you can read the article if you want that information. But their conclusion was that antiphospholipid syndrome, determination of that remains important in systemic autoimmune disease patients and should not be restricted to only lupus patients. So again, you can talk to your doctor about having cardiolipin antibodies run. You can talk to your doctor about having beta-2 glycoprotein antibodies performed lupus anticoagulant, diffuse Russell Viper Venom time um, performed as well. And what causes antiphospholipid syndrome? What they think happens is that you have antibodies binding on to the beta-2 glycoprotein, and that is seen in several tissues, but it's seen particularly in endothelial tissue, so your blood vessels. And there's some binding to phosphatidylserine, and when this antibody complex does that, then you have initiation of a complement cascade. You have initiation of thrombotic events that then lead to the thrombosis, so or the blood clot, as you would think of it. So hopefully this helps answer this question. If you have any other questions, let me know. Any other topics you want me to discuss, let me know. And we'll go from there. Again, Dr. Randall Gates, board-certified chiropractic neurologist, also a chiropractic physician at Gates Brain Health. Signing off. And... Go to YouTube and we'll end the stream.